the intersection between journalism and activism. Oh, sure. And trying to be a journalist mm -hmm. and knowing that the activist is maybe a different kind of role. That's right. But yet in so many ways, journalists are activists. That's right. And you have seen the evolution. So I wanted to ask you about, have you, have you, you thought about that in sure. terms of? Sure. You know, I, I do try to stick down the middle with everything. Um, and I feel like there's a lot of editorial uh, room that I can bring to even bringing up a discussion, right? I get to choose my topics. So I may choose something that normally maybe a white counterpart wouldn't. So to me, that is an exercise in activism, but it's a journalistic endeavor nonetheless. Um, you know, it's a fine line. And I think that I do try to maintain a more sturdy line on air. Now, sometimes I let go a little bit, but I try to maintain that. But I also am very active in the community. So I feel like, let me represent what my role is at this particular point in my life, but I can still be involved in these other ways. And I can still bring up the importance of the achievement gap. That's not going away and it's widened. And it's not just black kids, it's white rural kids. I mean, I think what I try to do is say, here are the commonalities. If you're poor, you're poor. I don't care if you live in the West End or in the holler, poor is poor. And so let's kind of bridge. The, one of the projects I do wanna work on is bridging the urban rural divide. And when I think about what being black and Southern means, now talk about trying to make that fit, right? And, and having a space where I can truly have a very honest conversation. Now I will say, the conversation I'm gonna have with Betty Baye about being black and in the South is probably different than what I'm gonna have on KET, statewide public television. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, but I still think you've got to introduce people. The, one of the, nicest compliments I've received is a, a white gentleman in Pike County says you know I watch you all the time I don't know why but I've got a little son at the time he was nine years old and we sit and watch you and he says I've learned so much about race relations about all of these things because I've watched you hmm. I thought, okay. It's worth getting up in the morning and doing the job see what I'm saying mm -hmm. just for him and that little nine-year-old boy if nobody else, and I'm, you're not trying to necessarily change minds, you're just trying to broaden minds. Mm -hmm. I always say, I'm not trying to tell you what to think, but I want to tell you what to think about. Think about the intersectionality of race and poverty and the criminal justice system in America and the educational system in America. Think about that. Re re read Melissa Harris Perry's uh, Sister Citizen's book. You know, go back and get the new Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. Mm. I'm not saying you got to agree with it, but you just sit there for a while with that book and read it like you would the Bible, read it every time for the first time, you will get something out of that. And I think that that's what my mission is. I'm not trying to necessarily, although I'd like to change some minds, mm -hmm. just to broaden what people might consider as worthy of discussion. And when it comes to race, mm -hmm. And Doris Kearns Goodwin said this the other week when I was there for the Authors Forum and, and A. Scott Berg, who mm -hmm. interviewed yeah. her, <laughs> said, we've got to have a conversation in this country about race. Now, I wanted to say, we have them all the time. Now let's do something. We talk about it all the time. And I'm not sure how we get there. I want to be a part of that. I want to get to know, because to be honest with you, across in my hometown of Portland, Tennessee, across the street, there is a family with whom we would exchange deer meat, and if somebody died or got sick, they'd bring you a casserole in a minute. But on any given day, that Confederate flag might be flying high, right? Mm. But they didn't interpret that necessarily as what we would interpret it as. It, they were just Dukes of Hazard fans, mm -hmm. right? So I had to learn, okay, they aren't hateful people necessarily. They just don't know what they don't know. And over time, and talking with them, well, I looked out my window one day when I was home recently. It was Thanksgiving of 2018, and they had the American flag, but I didn't see the Confederate flag. Mm. And I thought, and of course, their family has integrated, right? Yes. <laughs> right? So this is what happens now. They've got biracial grandchildren. Mm -hmm. and, but I thought, well, hallelujah. You know, we're getting somewhere. Sometimes we just have to 
If we just understood and took the time to just be in someone else's shoes and listen to somebody else's experience, I think we'd come a long way. And, and, and unfortunately, in this digital era, all of these new platforms push us further and further apart.